Today I want to share with you a book that you absolutely must have if you want precise piecing and points that match up perfectly. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and the book I'm talking about is called Easy Precision Piecing by Shelley Scott Tobish. Now, short title, it should really be called the book you absolutely should have before you even learn how to piece, because Shelley covers it all. Shelley loves to do small pieced quilts, well not quilts, small piece blocks to put in her quilts, her quilts aren't small, but she believes that doing things correctly or what will give you the best precision right from the start makes a huge difference in the results and she's absolutely right. So when you look at this book, she's not just talking about piecing. Oh no, 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 we're going right back to the beginning. We're talking about the fabric, how you should prepare it, how you can cut it, what colors you could put together, like I mean everything. So let's take a look inside. Okay, so she's talking about easy precision piecing, okay? So it, problems you may be having. You may be having problems with your ruler slipping. You might be having problems that when you cut your fabric strips, you have that V in the center. Or maybe your seams don't line up properly the way you want them to. So all those problems we typically encounter when we're first learning how to piece and sometimes that carry on through our piecing career, she's going to address in this book. And there are some products she likes to use. She talks about quilt block builders, okay? There's a couple things she talks about. One, one is quilt block builders. And these are actually um, paper templates for different uh, very simple traditional quilt blocks. But what's interesting about these is you can use these to build your fabric on and it helps to keep your fabric in the right order, your shapes in the right order. She also shows you on those which way to press as well. So she goes into detail about those and there are some quilt block builders in the back of this book at full size. So that's very helpful for you because I don't know about you but sometimes I have a real hard time <laughs> keeping my fabric pieces in the right order. You can do that with these quilt block builders. She also have qu has quilt block bases and this is a product you can buy from her and this is sort of like a little flannel board um, but it has an overlay over top. So you put that quilt block builder on it put your fabric on it and then you can cover it up with that um, like a stabilizer, see-through stabilizer that goes over the top and that way you can carry your blocks around. You can stack them on top of each other and they're great to take to retreats or other places or even just to your sewing machine when you're working. So really a lot of thought has gone into how to make the, the piecing you're doing the best, the most precise you can and also how to make it efficient to piece. So she believes in the system and by going through the book you'll see what her system is. Okay, she talks about the different tools you're going to need to have and some of the extra things that she also likes to use. She also talks about the thread she likes to use, specific thread she likes to use. All of these things are geared to making your results the best they can be. And so I really appreciate that kind of information and it makes a big difference. Remember I told you she was gonna talk about fabric? So she gets into the different fabrics and how important value and contrast are. So kind of a little primer on fabric and what makes an effective quilt with the different types of fabric you can get. And then we get into preparing the fabric. Now she even talks about how to pre-wash your pre-cuts, okay? So pre-cut squares, pre-cut bundles, okay? So fat quarters, maybe even charm squares. She takes you step by step how to do that, okay? This is something most people don't recommend you do, but if you follow Shelley's method, it'll come out just fine, I'm sure. Okay, she also talks about starching and pressing, okay? Very important to press your fabrics before, to starch, I should say, and press your fabrics before you cut them, because actually I always say the more paper-like your fabric is, the more accurate your cuts are going to be. So she talks about doing that, and she also shows you exactly how she presses too. Again, there's an efficiency uh, to the way she presses, and there's also uh, the, the method she uses is so that you don't distort or stretch your fabric. Again, all leading to precise results. Then we get into cutting, okay? Finally, we get into cutting, right? And she talks about fabric again, as far as where is the bias? Where's the lengthwise grain? Where's the crosswise grain? So there may be things in here that you've never really uh, known before when you first started a quilt. Maybe no one pointed these things out to you, but she will show you them and explain why they're important, okay? She also shows you how to prepare for that first cut, right? How to straighten your fabric so you don't get that dreaded V. And you can see all the different pictures in this book. So not only does she tell you there's a lot of um, text in the book, but also a lot of great up-close photos so you can see exactly what she's talking about. 
And then of course, once you've got your fabric all ready and you know how to cut it precisely, well, you have to make sure your sewing machine is going to take a really good stitch. So she gets into that, of course, as well. How to get the right tension, how to check tension. Okay, very important. How does she actually start piecing? She uses a header and a footer. And it's because of Shelly and her husband, Bernie Tobish, that I now use headers and footers on all my piecing projects for a number of reasons, not the least of which is so that you don't suck your fabric down into the little hole, you know, when it's stitching right at the edge. So to prevent that, she also even talks about different patchwork feet, okay, or what we might call a quarter inch foot. Some have a guide on the side. Should you use those? Should you not use those? All these little things can make a huge difference, right? And the most important thing that she shows you in here, the thing that was really a game changer for me, was how to put your fabrics together without using pins. So she uses seam aligned glue. If you haven't heard of seam aligned glue, you want to check either up above or in the description below for a video I've done on that. It is what I use all the time when I'm piecing. I also use it for applique, putting applique onto my projects. It has been a game changer. That's all I can say about it. It's a game changer. Make sure that your fabric pieces fit perfectly where you want them to. Okay, and we also want to talk about measuring for accuracy. You want to make sure that your sewing machine is actually sewing a quarter inch foot with the foot you're using on it. Maybe it's not. Maybe you need to move your needle position. Maybe you need to get another foot. All right, she also talks about precision versus perfection. Okay, so you want to try and be as precise as you can. Okay, it may not be perfect. That's not what you're trying to do. You're trying to get the results to be as good as you can by using these various uh, the system really that Shelley is talking about in the book. Then she gets into making precision piece blocks. So she's going to walk you through how to make some simple quilt blocks. Okay, so for example, a four patch block, very simple, but you want to make sure those seams match up perfectly when you're finished stitching it, right? She even talks about trimming the block. You might want to trim the block. Maybe it's a little, you know, it's a, maybe a little bigger than you want. You have to trim it down. She'll tell you how to do that. And one of the things she'll talk about, I don't think it's actually in this particular one, but she talks about using, um, taking, I know where it is, it's in the half square triangles. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, wait, wait, I'm, I'm jumping ahead, okay? We'll get to the half square triangles in a minute. Okay, here's half square triangles. Look at how fast that was, okay? <laughs> so when she's trimming them, she'll often make them bigger and trim them down a bit. Very little waste doing that, but you get a very accurate half square triangle. And when she is trimming, you know, you, you know, when you're pushing with your blade on the fabric, it can pull the fabric along a little bit and not get it quite as precise as you want. So she actually takes this double face tape, which is like here, very thin. You can see how thin it is. Um, you can put that on your cutting mat and you're gonna put the block on it. So it just holds it in place and prevents that kind of possible distortion depending on how, you know, how much you're pushing with your blade. So that's one of the products she likes to use. She also uses uh, maker's tape. This is maker's tape. It sort of looks like medical tape. Um, if you've ever seen this non-stick kind of medical tape, it, the nice thing about it is it tears perfectly, okay? And this is from CNT Publishing. And this tape, she likes to use this on the back of her uh, rulers, I should say, to prevent them from slipping. And she can also mark the back of her ruler with a couple of strips so it gives you something to butt up against when you're cutting your fabric along that particular line or even on an angle. So that's something else she recommends you use. So sometimes there's little, you know, little tools that are not very expensive that can make a big difference in your precision piecing. Okay, she talks about making pinwheel blocks, okay, and fanning the seams on the back because you've got a lot of seams coming together. And I've just got to show you this, okay? So I took a class with Shelly, um, and I've got to say my points have never matched like they have in this. So this is a small little block, as you can see, but look at those points. Oh, I got a sticker from Shelly for that. Okay, so <laughs> here's the back. Um, when I'm pressing my fabrics, I use Easy Press Solution, which is from uh, Acorn Precision Piecing, which is Bernie and Shelly. And if you're not familiar with that product, you can see up above or in the description below a video on that. It allows my seams to lie perfectly flat. It is a starch alternative. I use it all the time now. And this is why you get these seams lying as flat as you're seeing them here and my cute little fan center. Okay, so yeah. Okay, back to the book. So I kind of think of this as like a reference. I mean, these are things that she teaches in her class, but it's great to have the book because there's projects in it as well. So pinwheels and nine patches. There's a little pinwheel in the center. That's like the one I was making, similar to the one I was making with the pinwheel in the center for sure. Another one, plum pudding. So these are larger size quilts, but the block inside it is like eight by eight. So this whole block is eight by eight. So you can see these parts in the center 
are going to be pretty small, right? But because you can use these techniques, the system she's shown you, you can get those to match up perfectly and get really great results. Here's another one, Muskrat Hollow. This is actually the center that you see here was my little pinwheel block. So this part here is my little pinwheel block here that you can see. All right, so you can see how that's just that, just that little part there. I've got more to go, as you can see. But that's what I was working on for Muskrat Hollow, another good size quilt as well. But, you know, if you've looked at some of these quilts and you thought, I could never make that because they're so small, some of these ones as well. So I have to go back to show you this one, this Apple Yard language on the front cover. Again, these little blocks in here, there's a double four patch, it's three by three, and the shoe fly blocks are three by three. But by using these different techniques that she's showing you in the book, you can absolutely make them and get really good results as well. I talked about the block builders earlier. She's got them for different ones. You can see here, there's one for the shoe fly block. Okay, here's one for the, the double four patch. And you can see the arrows where she's telling you where to press. Sometimes that can be hard to determine. If they don't tell you, it can be frustrating, especially if you have a block that has a lot of different pieces in it. Okay, the circles here are color coordinated for the different fabrics you're using here. And she actually uses the same color little clips on the side to hold your blocks together while you're making them so that you don't get them out of order, right? And using the wrong fabric, which you don't want to do. Now at the, at the end of the book, she tells you how to make some binding or shows you, I should say, how to make some binding here. Again, with photos, very detailed, how to end, uh, join the ends of the binding. Well, how to end the quilt, I guess, right? And then as I said, in the back of the book, she's got, you can see here, here is some of these um, block builder, I always call them the wrong thing, block builder, uh, quilt block builders, sorry, quilt block builders. So you can see that you could print these, or take these out, you could also photocopy them to use them. But you know, when you're coming into some of these where there's all this going on here, having someone tell you where and which, or which way I should say to press the seams is really, really helpful because that's something I struggle with and it makes a big difference in how flat your block is going to lie if you get things going in the right directions, right? So if you want to up the game on your piecing when you're making your quilts. I highly recommend Easy Precision Piecing by Shelley Scott Tobish. It's an absolute must have in my mind. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and be sure to share it with your quilting friends. And remember to subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I release a new video. And before you go, check out these other videos I've included just for you. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.